Well, hello, friends. This is Pastor Kevin O'Connor again, and welcome to the Reformed Review. I have a exciting Bible to review with you today. This is one I was hoping to get someday. Um, this is the Jesus Bible. It is uh, my wife actually got this one for me for our 19th wedding anniversary. This is in the New International Version. It is 66 books, one story, all about one name, and that's the name of Jesus. I want to go ahead and show you the beautiful artwork on this box. It is a clamshell box. And if you want, you can go ahead and pause the video right there and get a good look at the features. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of the box, and I'm going to set it down, and I'm going to read to you uh, some of these features, okay? I, I want to read it this way because I seem to read better with it closer to me the older I get. Um, it has introduction, uh, an introduction by Louis Giglio, 66 book introductions highlighting the story of Jesus in every book. This is a limited edition, exquisite cover art done by Josh Noom, imprinted on soft calfskin leather, this is, uh, it has six compelling essays on the grand narrative of scripture that guide you to treasure Jesus and encourage you to faithfully follow him as you participate in his story. There are over 300 full page articles. There are nearly 700 sidebar articles revealing Jesus through all of the scriptures. This is a single column text. Uh, of the most widely read English Bible, the New International Version. I may have preferred the ESV, but I like the NIV, and I love this Bible. Uh, it has room for notes and journaling throughout the Bible. It has a NIV dictionary and concordance. It has three double columns, satin or double sided, excuse me, satin ribbon markers, each three eighths inch wide. It has the exclusive Zondervan. Comfort print typeface in 9.5 font. So there you have it. You've got a whole bunch of features. And actually, this Bible on ChristianBooks.com is the reason I got it in NIV is because it is on sale right now for $49. Okay, this is a steal by any stretch of the imagination for a Bible with all the features that this has, and to have a calfskin cover. Now, you'll notice, as I pulled this out of the box, and I know somebody was just dying in their skin, seeing that this was already wrinkled right here on the corner. I'm going to lift that up. You see how that's already wrinkled, and it was because it was laying in the box like this, okay? Now, over time, that'll come, that, that'll flatten back down after use, but I wanted to go ahead and show you all the flaws. It got a little wrinkled on top, but that's going to, you know, this is this is real animal skin. And you, the more you use it, the softer it's going to become, the more it's going to lay flat. Um, just get a good look at that artwork on the front of there, on, on the cover. I want to show you also the spine. They have lots of good artwork on the spine. Um, I love that they did not put their... Uh, ISBN number on the outside. They put it on the inside of the back cover. Um, what you will notice about this Bible, first of all, it is a study Bible. It's 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 pretty big. It's a pretty big Bible. Um, it is. It does have. Uh, it is perimeter stitched. It, it's stitched on there, stitched in there. Um, the liner is probably synthetic, but it feels like it could be. A calfskin liner. I don't know that it is. I haven't researched it. It is edge lined, obviously, because it has a real cover and a stitched outside. Uh, you have a gold gilt line. And the corners are actually really good for a mass produced Bible. I, I wouldn't say they're really good. Okay, let me rephrase that. They are pretty good for a mass-produced Bible. You have definitely got some uh, good, uh, it, it's not, it's just gold gilding, it's not art gilding, because when you lay it flat, there's no art gilding there. It's just white paper when you, when you 
open it up. But this cover is super soft. Like I said, we're going to be able to get that little wrinkle out of there. Um, you set it on the shelf with some other Bibles on top of it. That's going to iron itself right out over time and with being used. Now, if you will, let's go ahead and open this up. I want to open it up. Uh, the first, first page you come to is the Jesus Bible, okay? And then you're going to get your, uh, oh goodness, copyright page. You have your table of contents. Excuse me for hitting this camera. I apologize. Hold still now. Uh, you have your Old and New Testament. You have your preface. And then you get into the contributors. And I want to go ahead and pull that up there so you can zoom in and look at it, pause it, and see who these contributors are, okay? I like that they put them in there. I like that they have them uh, available for you to look up. Uh, and then it has our welcome or our introduction. Welcome to the story of God. Article by Louis Giglio. <clears throat> Not in frame. <laughs> uh, and this is a, a substantial five, or, you know, four, yeah, four page uh, introduction to this Bible. And then you get right into the Old Testament. And what you'll realize from the very beginning, before you get to the, the first page where it says Genesis, you're going to have a theme for the book of Genesis. Jesus, our glorious creator. And why do they take the time to do this? And that's because the New Testament tells us in John 1 verse 3 that all things were made by him and nothing is made as made without him. Jesus is the creator. And we got to understand that this same God who created the universe is the same God who dwelt within Christ who came to this earth to, to be born of a virgin and to die upon a cross and be raised from the dead, this same Jesus has always existed. He was with the God in the beginning. The Word was with God and the Word was God. All things were made by Him and without Him there was nothing made that was made. And then you have your introduction to the book of Genesis. Now I have quite bright light right here, so I'm going to kind of pull this up so you can see. It, it gives you kind of a little outline of what's going to be happening in the book of Genesis. And then you have a one-page introduction. And then you have, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And they're giving you the first verse there in understanding this beginning story. So we open it right up. And the first thing you'll notice is that we have a single column layout in this Bible, which most people like, okay? I'm not going to say I don't like it. I love a single column layout. Now, Genesis 3, 1, 3. You have a, a, a mini article over here. You have another mini article. And then you have a full page article right here talking about Jesus created everything and holds all things together. These are things that are highlighted in the New Testament understanding the creation story from the understanding that Jesus was the one who was with God and who created all things. And I really love this double column layout. Uh, uh, the, the font size is adequate. The print size on the side seems to be uh, a little bigger, honestly. The, the note size and the outline on the side seems to be a little bigger. Now, there's times, they say you have a room in the, the margins. I want you to notice that on pages where you have lots of these mini articles, you do not have any room for notes, really, okay? Um, now, that being said, you're going to, oh, here's a full two-page article. Look at here. This is a full two-page article of the beginnings. Jesus says the supreme display of God the glory of God. This is going to be a nice article for you to read. It's actually continued as a four or five pages of that article, okay? And then you get into a whole nother full page article, which is the first Adam and the ruin of humanity, which is a, going to be a great read, okay? 
I want to go ahead and show you. Now, see here where there's no side article, you do have lots of room to take notes. You do have lots of room to uh, get some notes of your own in there. Uh, I do like the fact, I apologize, I keep moving this camera. I do like the fact that you get all that space when there's no commentary. I want to go ahead and look. I have not looked and I haven't, uh, I haven't observed. I, haven't, I didn't go to the intertestamental period to look at anything. But I want to go over here and look in the intertestamental period and see if they have any supplemental information. Just, it, I'm just curious if they do or not or if they just, yep, they do. Okay, here we go. The intertestamental period. You have uh, at least two pages of an article right now for the intertestamental period. Looks like you have two pages, then you get into the New Testament. Then you're going to start with the book of Matthew, and we start with Jesus, our promised king, which is the theme of the book of Matthew. Jesus showing you that Jesus, or excuse me, uh, Matthew showing you that Jesus is the promised king of the Old Testament. And that, that is Matthew's theme throughout the book of Matthew. He is showing you why Jesus and how Jesus fulfills all the prophecies concerning the coming king of Israel. Now, I want to get to the back because this is important. Now, looky here. I, just flipping through uh, Hebrews, and here's another article on faith. And it's from Hebrews 11, 1 through 40. Obviously, the Hall of Heroes, the Hall of Faith, okay? Um, but here we have a whole article dedicated to that topic. I um, want to go ahead and get to the back of this Bible, to the book of Revelation. And then, when we're done, I'll show you the, the, the ribbons, okay? Because those ribbons are really nice, okay? Okay, did we pass it? Nope. We did not pass it. Okay, here's. All right. So after the book of Revelation and this final article in the book of Revelation seems to be very long. Uh, I want to go ahead and look at this real quick. Uh, this, this is titled Forever Made for a Difference. We were made the whole, a whole new world, a future heaven where we will live forever. Jesus the prime example of our resurrected lives, uniting heaven and earth, our forever home, uh, wonders of the holy city, any, anything but boring, uh, anticipating life on the new earth, the old earth made new and far better. Our best relationships are ahead of us. Get a head start on kingdom living. <clears throat> Those are just some of the topics in that final article, and it is long. So after the book of Revelation, after that final article, you'll have a uh, the final words of the last chapter of Revelation. You have chapter uh, 22, verse 14 through 21, okay? And then you have table of weights and measures, and you get right into the dictionary and concordance. Now, the one drawback I've seen just, and this is, I literally had this first time I've opened this Bible, what I would say is a disappointment is the size of the concordance, the size of the 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 uh, dictionary concordance. Because for as big as this Bible is, you don't get lots and lots and lots of concordance use. Now, I did. They don't have page numbered on the first one, so let's look at this one. So it starts on page 1973 and ends on 1998, okay? So you have a little over 20 pages of concordance, which is not very large, okay? So I would say if there was a drawback, anything they could improve on this Bible would be a more substantial concordance because I know that the NIV Study Bible has much more extensive uh, concordance and dictionary than that. And then you have a few lined, excuse me, a few lined pages for notes. 
you have a note regarding the typeface, and then you are at the back of the Bible. There is absolutely no Bible maps. None. You don't have to worry about uh, getting glossy Bible cardstock maps because there isn't any maps to be had in here, okay? Uh, that's not a disappointment to me because I rarely use the maps in the back of a Bible, um, so it doesn't disappoint me too much. Now, let's go ahead and open this, and I want to I want to get to the ribbons. Uh, I have to confess, one reason that I do Bible reviews on new Bibles that I get is so that I can use them. I wait <laughs> to use them until I get to do a review on them. Now, I will do a review on all of my Bibles after I've uh, worked through them some, uh, but this is, uh, this is a really... Uh, really important uh, thought in my mind, at least. I, I try to review them fresh, and I tried not to even take them out of the box, uh, maybe except once before I do a review on them. Uh, I will say, I am pleasantly surprised with these Bible ribbons. They're double-sided satin ribbons. Uh, they are substantially longer than most Bible ribbons that you get in uh, regular Bibles. And when I say that, I want to go ahead and look here. I have a, I have a Cambridge sitting right beside this one. And, and I just want to compare for you, okay? This is Cambridge Bible ribbons, and this is the Zond this is Zondervan's Bible, Bible ribbons for this Bible. They are at least an inch and a half longer, at least. I would say probably close to two inches longer. Um, now, there's nothing wrong with Cambridge's Bible ribbons. They're plenty long enough to do the job that you do. And this is a Bible I've already reviewed. Um, actually love this Bible. I take it home quite often to uh, study with. But, uh, and, and I haven't I haven't never been like, oh, these ribbons are too short, until you lay it up against a Bible that has really substantial ribbons. And if you like really long ribbons, you're going to like this Bible. Now, the one thing I would say is I love the choice of gold, and I love the choice of green. I don't understand the choice of silver, because there's nothing silver in this Bible other than kind of the page layout. Let me see if I can get you to see this highlighted box. You see how that's gray? And a lot of the parts of the Bible with these single column uh, articles are like that. They have a gray box around them. So maybe they're uh, putting the gray ribbon in there to kind of match that. Um, I have not studied a whole lot of the articles in here. I did a quick peruse of them. They seem good. The content seems good. I like the theme of the Bible, how it's pointing you in every book to Christ. I think this is uh, phenomenal, the way that they did this. And here's one way I would check an article. In, in case you're wondering, Pastor, how do I check and see if a Bible is kind of lining up a little bit conservative or if it's way off in left? Field, okay, uh, my best way to answer that is go look at familiar parts of the Bible where you know the, the, the content and you know kind of what kind of uh, uh, commentary you may be getting from this. Um, I do like that right here in John 1.1, you have an article, it's called The Word of God. It says, from the very beginning of creation, God has been making himself known to his people by his revealed word. In Genesis 1, we read the account of God speaking to the world, or speaking the world into existence and speaking uh, relationally to Adam. In Exodus 3, God spoke to Moses from a burning bush, called him to be his agent to liberate Israel from slavery in Egypt. Throughout the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, God gave instruction to his chosen people that they would know the glories of his righteousness and the wonders of his love. 
God taught, God taught his people how to worship through the words of the psalmist. And he reminded them of their coming hope through the words of the prophets. But God gave us his greatest revelation when Jesus, the Son, the very word of God, came to earth. The author of Hebrews explains this well in Hebrews 1, 1 through 3. And if you don't know what Hebrews 1, 1 through 3 says, it says that in the times past, God spoke to us through the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son, Jesus. So this seems to be falling in a very conservative light of scripture. I think it's going to be a great Bible tool. I think it's going to be interesting to read lots of these articles. I think it's going to be nice to have a Bible that points Jesus out in every book of the Bible. I think this is, uh, uh, I, I'm excited to get into this Bible. I have not, uh, uh, I have not studied it in depth, the different articles. I may do a review later on on that very thing. I hope you tune into that review when I go through the different articles I like. Um, definitely excited about using this Bible. It's beautiful on the outside, and it, the, the theme of this Bible uh, has me very excited. So there you have it, the Jesus Bible. This is the artist edition this is the limited edition artist edition but they have these in many different covers with many different cover options at uh substantially cheaper prices uh this would have been like a 200 dollars bible that i've gotten for 49.99 um so if you want to go grab yourself one on christianbooks.com right now it'd be a great time to do it they're on sale and once again Thanks for tuning in to the Reformed Review, and until next time, God bless you.